Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Team Cross Nation, and today's the usual Monday update where we go over the thing where we go oh <laughs> where we go over everything that's coming out for this week. Starting from yesterday, we actually are getting the Halloween type of a cutscene event for the actual Keyblade wielders, and I have that with an S at the end since no one ever seems to know who is talking in the cutscenes. But at the very least, we're finally getting uh, their event this year. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I re believe I recall that JP got this event last year. Uh, but it comes with 1,000 jewels, which is pretty cool. Um, as well as I'll also be including it on my website in the story section, uh, just like usual with all the other cutscenes. Aside from that, we're having another raid event week. It's not a competitive week, just the normal raid event that we've had the last few weeks. I cannot begin to tell you just how tiresome I find these. To be honest, I, I, I much rather they keep it on just Saturdays and Sundays. I don't like the fact that they have it all throughout the week. It gives me the sense like I have to do it during the week and I don't like that because it, it's very tedious to do. You basically need to get it to at least around level 90 and they only level up by one. So it's it's very aggravating to do. I don't I don't like it. It's not enjoying it's not enjoyable at all whatsoever. And then when competitive week does come around, it it feels we we feel kind of already worn down because we've been already rating the last three weeks <laughs> from these uh, for like whatever days straight. It's it's not. I don't like it. They need to stop, please, please. Square Enix, if you're watching this, please stop it. It's not enjoyable at all whatsoever. Next up, we have another event coins event uh, for this week. It's just more event coins, and it's honestly really easy. There's not too much that needs to be said about this. Next up on the list is VIP again. Uh, just like always, we're getting a gold ticket if you purchase VIP for this week. Comes along with the Vanitas Remnant B medal, just like last week. And unlike last week, it's actually coming along with the trait medal for the Prime uh, Joshua and Neku medal, which I was not expecting. It would have been nice if they told us about this, because now I feel like I just wasted my jewels. Uh, instead of getting four copies of the medal, so that way I can get two 144 traits, I could have gotten just three. Or if they do it next week as well, just two of them. I could have saved 3,000 or 6,000 jewels, or more for those of you who might have gotten uh, multiple copies. I'm sure it's not many of you but for those of you that did like it would have saved you some some hassle um so it, it, that, that kind of annoys me but anyways that is included in the vip deal as well as the fact that we're also receiving lucifer paws and mask for vip as well uh, i don't know about you guys but i'm not a huge fan about lucifer so i mean yeah i like his character but i'm not like crazy fan where i feel like i need to pay money for his parts um especially like when his parts don't even do too much to be honest his pause and mask only offer a skill perk of plus two which is significantly low it's not even that great right now the highest is plus nine <laughs> there's so many more common things that we get these days that offer plus three and that are better than this like i don't know i don't know what they're trying to do here they're much they were much better off making this like a normal item you could have gotten I don't know. That's just my opinion anyways. Um, but included as one VIP, we're also getting the magic brooms and mirrors like usual, as well as the gems. Last but not least, we are getting some new Halloween avatar boards. I'm not going to lie. These honestly kind of caught me by surprise. I was not expecting more avatar boards for Halloween to come out when they literally just re-released them, as well as released two new versions earlier as well with the, the werewolf and the black cat thing. Um, so it kind of surprised me that they came out with two new more of them. I believe JP have these already, but we're, we're getting them now. Although the best thing about these that I have to say is about the fact that, sure, the crow hat gives you a plus six perk. That's that's decent, okay? Um, the attack skill is also pretty similar to what I believe the werewolf uh, avatar board had which is the attack boost 6 max and lux plus plus and attack boost 7 max and gauge 0 that's pretty good uh, attack boost I mean second chance 4 is is good but it's like it's not that 
It's not like you don't have to worry too much about that. Even just second chance three with high enough skill perk attached is pretty much the equivalent of a second chance four. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. The main thing is the attack skills right there. Um, but it's the Doctor Avatar board that is by far the best thing about this just because of the fact that the attack boost seven max up AP plus, AP plus and Lux plus, ignore that. That's garbage, okay? The main thing are the poison two plus max, Paralysis plus two max and sleep plus two plus max. These are fantastic. Um, now you guys are not aware, but I've actually been mess messaging Glacy for quite a while now, uh, asking her if we can please get some of the individual uh, ailment skills back because we have not seen them in practically a year. And the only thing we've seen related to that are the max skills from the organization 13, uh, uh, metals and such and we haven't even seen sleep max yet uh, so like these were highly needed because I don't know about you guys but I don't want to just keep using solely triple threat every single time uh, I'm definitely gonna be abusing the sleep to max a whole lot just because of the fact that I want that I want to use that as an attacker turn one to get rid of people's as soon as so that way I can use triple threat on turns two and three uh, just to help make sure it goes off if you're not aware a lot of people in their competitive builds for PvP will typically try to have like a 100% paralysis like resistance or something like that. But if you happen to inflict paralysis the turn before, before they get to their setup that has that, they'll still have paralysis even though they have resist to it. Because resist only stops it from being afflicted to you. It doesn't stop it from being on you. Okay, so that's the kind of advantage that I want to do about that with sleep max. Sleep max is still super useful. Uh, paralysis 2 max obviously is going to be, if you don't have paralysis max, the 2 uh, plus max will basically be almost an equivalent of that. So so I'm very glad that this is back. I'm not too sure whether or not to take it as to maybe uh, Glacia did relate to the devs my request that they bring these back uh, or not because I did ask her multiple times. But uh, I'll just take it as a good sign that maybe it, it possibly is. Just as a quick tip though for anybody wondering, uh, I did make a video many months ago talking about which skills are, be are best used on which metals. I'll leave a card up above to a link to that video if you want to check that out. Uh, but just as a quick tip, if you're looking to use any of these ailment skills on a metal, try to use it on a metal with extra attack if possible, just to help guarantee that the opponent actually gets inflicted with the metal just in case it misses or they have resistance or something like that. Uh, Cause those type of situations do happen. That's just some quick advice. But other than that, that's it for today guys. I just wanted to quickly go over all of that. Uh, just a last announcement before I end this video. I don't know if you guys have noticed in your YouTube feeds and not on the phone. I don't know if they pop up on desktop, but at least on the phone. Uh, I recently have been able to post messages to you guys in the YouTube feeds as a comment uh, that you guys can actually see and comment on as well. I recently posted a poll uh, requesting to you guys which, exactly which of the types of beginner guides that you guys would like to see sometime soon, just because of the fact I am planning to make a whole batch of them fairly soon to cover a lot of stuff. I've been watching a lot of people's streams for Union Cross quite a bit lately and for uh, I'm pretty sure quite a few of you uh, know what I mean because I've visited your streams or such. So uh, if you happen to stream Union Cross, keep an eye out because I might end up visiting your stream at some point. But just from watching people's streams, I've pretty much been uh, realizing that I really need to make these beginner guides really soon because a lot of people don't seem to understand the basics <laughs> quite that much or let alone how to do proper Keyblade setup. So uh, yeah, it's it's by far gonna be one of the things I'm gonna be looking to do sometime soon. Um, as well as the fact that once I make those videos, they will be included in the tutorial section of my website as well. Uh, so that way for anybody that needs help or if there's a new player that joined your party, for example, uh, you can just send them over to my website and check out the tab and boom. Uh, they will basically have everything they need to know there on my website. But yeah, it would really help me out if you can go ahead and participate in that poll. If you are watching from desktop, uh, just go over to my channel page and click on the community tab. Uh, it should be posted there for you to take a look at and give your vote.
But other than that, by all means, let me know what your guys' thoughts are about this week's uh, material down in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.